All right, I'd like to call today's uh, April 18th, 2012, Creeks Department meeting to order, please. Jim, would you like to take roll call, please? Mr. Bullock? Present. Mr. Smith? Here. Ms. French? Here. Ms. Lomas? Here. Ms. Weber? Here. Mr. McIntosh? Here. Mr. Casebeer? Here. Thank you. You should all have a copy of uh, today's agenda and the minutes from our last meeting in March. Um, hope you've all had a chance to look through that. Could I get a motion to approve the minutes from last meeting? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'll abstain. Because <clears throat> you weren't here. here. Mm. Um, Cameron, are there any adjustments to today's agenda? No. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak? All right. Any staff communications? No. Any committee member communications? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Oh, so I, I, I should just say that we did have a um, budget subcommittee meeting on March 21st. That was a that was a notice meeting, and we'll be hearing a little more about that and when we discuss the budget tonight. Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on, we. We have um, Dr. Jill Murray and Jeff Brinkman to give a report. And who's going first? Jeff? Okay. All right. All right, Jeff, take it away. Thank you. Okay. Oh, great. Can you say that again? <laughs> sure. Uh, Good evening. I'm Jeff Brinkman with Ecology Consultants Incorporated, um, the city's consultant for the Creeks Bioassessment Program. Um, so, I guess we can get started here. Just click? Yeah. Okay, great. Here we go. Here we go here. Okay. Here we go. Oh, resume. Left, right there. Okay, cool. And then just click to go from one to the next. Wheel. Okay, great. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So the Southern Coastal Santa Barbara Creeks and Estuaries Bioassessment Program. So we actually uh, started studying estuaries as well last year. Uh, this is a picture of Mission Creek here at Rocky Neck Park. Um, just briefly go over the purposes of the bioassessment program. This is a long-term monitoring program. Uh, for creeks and for estuaries now, and we're trying to assess uh, ecosystem condition with this program. So um, we're also looking for uh, how the ecosystems, the creek and estuaries, respond to natural and human influences. We're interested in natural variability with things like uh, climate, rainfall, um, various other factors, gradient, watershed area, that kind of stuff, as well as uh, those human impacts and human benefits, hopefully, that we're... Uh, going to be having with restoration efforts. Um, we also have the ability, you know, doing specific sites to detect uh, impacts, to characterize the impacts of different types of human development, um, and also potentially identify sources of degradation. It's, it's kind of a, um, a broad tool. We can identify habitats, uh, creeks that are having issues um, ecologically and start looking upstream at what some of the causes of those might be. It also allows us to evaluate um, the benefits of creek restoration projects as well as uh, estuarine restoration projects, hopefully. Um, are those having a, a measurable improvement to the aquatic community? And just wanted to uh, also point out it's been a, a cooperative effort between the city and county for uh, about the last 11 years now. So our study area is the south coast um, here of Santa Barbara County basically from uh, Gaviota Creek to the west uh, over into Carpinteria Rincon Creek is our easternmost uh, boundary. And we go to the uh, um, ridge line of the San Inez Mountains, so we don't go to the backside into the San Inez Valley. We're strictly in the coastal creeks and estuaries. We've been studying the creeks since 2000. Uh, typically, we've surveyed between 15 to 20 uh, study reaches per year. 
A lot of those are repeat sites that we look at uh, every year, and then others are uh, kind of done on a rotating basis. Some years we've done more, uh, but that's kind of the typical average. Some of our uh, reaches within the city are in Mission Creek, where we usually have three to four. Sycamore Creek, we have two study reaches in Arroyo Borough, anywhere from three to five, depending on the year. And we look at a full range of conditions. We're going from the headwaters to the ocean. We're looking at uh, you know, relatively, relatively pristine streams up in the mountains and uh, foothills, all the way down to our urbanized um, and agriculturally impacted streams. So you got uh, on the top there's uh, Mission Creek at Rocky Nook, and the bottom is Mission Creek at De La Gary. You can see some of the differences there. Uh, last year we incorporated uh, three estuaries into our program. So we looked at the Mission Creek, Sycamore Creek, and Arroyo Borough estuaries. This year we're going to be doing those three as well, and we're also adding three more uh, that are in our professional judgment in the best available condition. So obviously our, our development is kind of concentrated along the coastline here. It's tough to find estuaries that are, uh, we don't really have any pristine estuaries here, but we're going to try and find the three best representatives that we can, and I'll kind of explain why we're doing that a little bit later. So what do we do uh, in our bioassessment program? Um, we start off with our rapid bioassessment field surveys. The focus of that is our benthic invertebrate sampling. So those are our aquatic invertebrates. They're over a half millimeter in size. So you can see them with the naked eye. They go up to a couple of inches, including things like mayflies, caddisflies, um, uh, odinates, which are dragonfly larvae, toe biters. Some of you guys might have heard of those. You want to stay away from those. Um, it's a pretty wide, beetles, aquatic beetles. So that's what we're focusing on. Um, we also do some limited water chemistry monitoring. We look at things like dissolved oxygen, temperature, pH, conductivity. We do some basics there. We also do a, uh, what we call a semi-quantitative physical habitat assessment. So um, that's where we're actually going out and visually inspecting the, um, the study reach, looking at things like uh, the riparian community, how wide is the riparian corridor, what kind of condition it's in, what do the creek banks and bed look like, what's the substrate, um, is it natural substrate, is there a lot of sedimentation, has it been removed, um, the flow, how much water is in the creek, the different habitats, the little subhabitats like the riffles and pools. We evaluate uh, a bunch of different parameters there and we come up with it, an actual score for the creek. Uh, we also do some limited uh, plant and wildlife uh, observations. We do keep lists. Some of these creeks we've done 10 or 12 years now, so we have a pretty good list going of what we've observed there. And then other general observations. We have a laboratory component where we look at our benthic invertebrate samples. We pick the bugs out. We count them. Uh, we identify them usually to the family level. And we use that information. Um, we've used the information from our, from our creeks to create what we call an index of biotic integrity, which you might probably remember from last year, uh, is an actual scoring system where we are providing one overall number for each creek reach you know, from 0 to 70 um, based on how, you know, what kind of condition it's in. And then we uh, obviously evaluate the data and we provide an annual report every year. And the annual report, uh, I think, is going to be available on the city's website pretty soon here. That is finished for 2011. So what is rapid bioassessment? Uh, you might be wondering. And I kind of mentioned we focus on the benthic invertebrates. So we're using those benthic invertebrates, in this case, as the prime indicator of ecological condition. And why do we do this? Uh, it's a very highly proven, it's a, a proven method. Uh, people have been doing bioassessment for 150 years now. Um, obviously, it's progressed in that time. It's very cost effective as opposed to going out and doing multiple surveys in a creek, you know, weekly or monthly or whatnot to look at water quality and some other parameters. Uh, this is very cost effective. Um, the benthic invertebrates, the reason that they're, they're effective indicators is because they have varying abilities to withstand disturbance. So lots of different types of disturbance, but water pollution, uh, impacts to the physical habitat of the creeks, some bugs can handle a lot of uh, disturbance, some can't. So that's why they work. Um, another advantage is they're long-term indicators. So they live in the creek for anywhere from uh, a couple of weeks to a couple of years. 
And since they're integrating all the conditions of the creek, as we all know, streams uh, vary in their conditions widely throughout the year, depending on weather and rainfall and that kind of stuff. Um, so these provide us a real long-term look at what the stream is, is doing and what condition it's in, as opposed to water chemistry, which, as we know, is just a snapshot and is highly variable through time. So what is the index of biotic, biotic integrity? Uh, that's our tool that we use. Um, as I mentioned, we've used our own data from the uh, several hundred creek surveys we've done over the last 12 to 13 years to develop this. And we've, uh, we've developed metrics, things like um, the number of aquatic insect species that we have, or actually the number of families, um, different trophic groups, how many predators, what percentage of the stream are predators and shredders and collector gatherers and some of these different um, feeding groups things like that. Uh, we've developed a long list of, of those type of metrics, a lot of which have been established in the literature. We've done statistical analysis and we've determined which of those metrics are the most reliable. Uh, and what I mean by that is which ones respond uh, most significantly and most, m most clearly with human disturbance patterns. So they're either high in an undisturbed condition and drop to a low score in a real disturbed condition or vice versa. Uh, those are the type of um, metrics that we've used to uh, put this IBI together. And so what this tool effectively does is it uses all the data we've collected, provides a scoring system, and then allows us to assess the condition of each stream we evaluate. So it's condensing all of that information into something that's easily understood. And we actually have five categories of ecological condition based on the score, um, excellent, good, fair, poor, and very poor. Obviously, a very poor would be on the low end of the scale, and an excellent would be on the higher end of the scale. And this tool, uh, in, in com you know, combining all this data, um, provides us with an effective tool to evaluate our management decisions and see what's working, what isn't, where we need to focus our attention. So just some results, uh, just to kind of summarize some things that we've um, ascertained over the you know, 10 plus years we've been doing this, is the IBI is, is a, a pretty good tool for us. What you're seeing on the right there, um, that's called an ANOVA. It's an analysis of variance. And what we do with our creek reaches is we actually give them a designation before we do any biological work on them. And that's based on um, their watershed area, what the, what the watershed development patterns are, how much urban and agricultural development there is. And then we take that physical habitat assessment score that we, uh, that we uh, compile, and we use those to categorize our creeks as either a reference stream, which is a, a relatively undisturbed stream, our best available, a moderately disturbed stream, which is kind of in the middle, or a highly disturbed stream, which would be you know, more of our urban impacted streams with a lot of development in their watershed and relatively low habitat assessment scores. So if we take that kind of a priori, those groupings, um, and then we look at their IBI scores, what we see is a real distinct separation, a highly uh, statistically significant distinction between those groups, which is what we would obviously want to see if this is going to be an effective tool. And it's been very accurate, um, so that 97% to three classes, what that means is if you have a um, a reference stream, it should be in those top three, either fair, good, or excellent. If it's in one of those three, we consider it to be accurately assessed. There is some variability uh, with this, but you're not, getting any gro you're not getting very many gross inaccuracies. We're not calling reference streams poor in, in, very, few in very few cases is that happening with the IBI. Uh, some other results that we've seen as far as natural variability goes, and this is obviously beyond the scope of any human impacts that we have. Um, our biggest rainfall year uh, on record since we've done this was 2005. That was, I think, like a, the second highest uh, rainfall total in the last 100 years or third highest or something like that. So it was a very significant year as far as rainfall goes. And what you see if you look at 2005 is a clustering. Those are all sites that we've looked at every year. And you see that the um, reference sites that normally score really high actually came down into the fair and poor range, 30 or below. So that shows what a major disturbance it is to have those kind of scouring flows going through. They're basically scouring out the creek and resetting it, and then you see recovery in the next uh, year or two after that. So that's one thing we've noticed, and that's something that is obviously important um, 
to understand in the context of what we're doing. We're not going to falsely attribute um, a major drop in IBI score to reference stream. Well, something must have happened. Was there a spill? Or Well, no, there was a ton of rain. So um, that's the use of, of this type of knowledge, obviously. And then also we've had some, as we all know, some uh, pretty significant wildfires in recent years. Um, so this graph shows IBI scores for these study reaches uh, immediately before the fire. And then the first year after, you see a, a real significant drop, especially with the uh, reference streams that we're scoring in the 50s and 60s. We see a huge drop. Those are actually uh, Rocky Nook, Mission Creek at Rocky Nook, and Rattlesnake Creek, which is further up on the watershed. So we see real devastating impacts from those fires and, you know, the, in, the ensuing uh, flows and all the sedimentation that came down after the fires the next year. We had a, quite a bit of rain after uh, most of those fires. So. Uh, that's Sycamore Creek. Yeah. So and that's, that kind of brings up another point. If you look at this, the streams that scored on the lower end before the fires, you don't really see a whole lot of change. And that's because they're already pretty heavily impacted, and there's really not much further to, to drop in those cases. So we, we really see the pronounced effects at, at streams that are obviously in that reference condition. And then um, last year we saw a recovery about halfway back up with uh, Rattlesnake and, and Mission at Rocky Neck. So maybe this year they'll be fully recovered. We'll see. So it's, you know, it's interesting. We're, we're able to do some, some good science here as well and understand uh, – how these natural influences affect our creeks as well. And another thing that we're looking at is um, some creek restoration sites that we've done. You're all familiar, obviously, with uh, Old Mission Creek at um, Bonnet Park. That's the blue line there. And then uh, we have um, <clears throat> Mesa Creek, which is uh, in the Arroyo Burrow Estuary Watershed. It's a small uh, tributary stream that, as you all know, I'm sure was daylighted in 2007. So the mission, uh, old Mission Creek project was initiated in 2004. So we have more data, obviously, uh, in the years following. So at zero there, that was actually the year before those restoration projects. And, and then the, uh, the data beyond that is for each ensuing year. So with Mission, or old Mission Creek, it looks like there's you know, possibly been some improvement there. We've had a, a modest rise in IBI scores overall. Uh, there's been a lot of work done at that site obviously with the riparian corridor, some in-stream habitat improvements, and then obviously the water quality um, with the UV system and, and the bioswales and all that. So um, it'll be interesting to kind of track these through time and see um, how they improve, if they improve, how much they improve. Um, and just a point to make, obviously we all know that we can do things at, at the fine level with restoration, but really these are watersheds. We need to think about uh, the watershed level. How much can we do at the watershed level to improve our habitats? We can't just work at the, uh, at the local level. So what's next for the bioassessment program? Obviously, we're, gonna, we're continuing this year uh, with several our established reaches. Uh, we also try and at, um, rotate in a couple new sites each year, um, and that helps us expand our database and look at uh, a wider range of conditions. The IBI is something we can reevaluate every five to ten years. The IBI that we, the current version we have, has about ten years of data. Uh, maybe when we get to fifteen or twenty, obviously we'll have more to look at, a wider range of conditions, a wider uh, range of uh, climate, and all that type of stuff. So we'll want to probably revise that through time. And then uh, the major thing, kind of that we're, that's new this year, is with the estuaries. Um, we want to see if there's any uh, potential to develop an IBI or a similar tool for the estuaries. They're different systems. They've got um, even more variable fluctuating conditions than our streams do. Our streams have a tremendous fluctuation in water levels, somewhat in water chemistry, substrate, all that, depending on what's going on. The estuaries have, you know, throw on top of that the whole salinity issue and wider temperature fluctuations as well. So that limits what can live in estuaries naturally. So we're not sure. Um, estuarine IBIs have been develop, developed in several other areas in the country, back east, in the south, like in the Gulf of Mexico, up north, Puget Sound area, San Francisco Bay. They've had some success developing IBIs. So what we're going to do this year is look at our three best available sites. It's kind of a, the lowest cost approach we can. And then we're going to 
we're going to compare the data for those three sites and our three estuaries in town that we know have quite a lot of disturbance so and see if there is any change or any difference and we'll just kind of go from there with that well that's all I've got any questions or comments anybody Right, Mission Creek, Sycamore Creek, and Arroyo Burrow. So those are the three in town that, that we've got that we looked at last year, and we'll look at those again this year. Anything else? Question? Um, yeah. How will you just determine the best available? Will you just move out the Sagadio Coast and right. check out the existing ones and pick out the top three? Exactly. That's, that's what we're doing. We're, um, we, are, we started off, obviously, just by looking at aerial photos, maps, that kind of stuff. We kind of have an idea anyway. We've been up and down this coast for so many years that kind of kept our eyes out. But So it's, it's just kind of layers, first looking at aerials, and then we've actually been going out. Uh, today we actually went out and looked at some sites, some potential sites. So um, we've got, you know, five or six already in mind that we're going to narrow that down. Okay, you're welcome. Anything else? Yeah, I was just looking on your website. You guys are based in San Clemente. San Clemente. And it looks like you have a handful of other projects going on. Yes, sir. Um, is there anything that you do or don't do for us here that you think we should be adding to this project? Are there other parameters <laughs> that we should be measuring for? Well, you if you be, had an unlimited budget? <laughs> you got to be careful when you ask a consultant that question because you'll end up with a large bill. You know what? This program is um, – obviously, we like to look at more sites. We would like to incorporate um, – we could do we could do more. We could look at more sites, but within the budget that we have, I think we do a great job. It's a program that we've been able to refine quite a bit over the years, and really get down to what's effective and and make it more cost effective that way. So, we could always do more with more money. But um, I like the program. I, I like where it's going, and uh, obviously we'd love to expand it. But uh, okay. Thank you. Natasha? Yeah, I have a question. Um, oh, sure. <clears throat> the um, graph for the fire, it yes. only went up to 2008. Um, about how quick of a recovery do you see after a fire in I mean, most of them? I mean, how many years here. would it take to get back to pre this, You're talking about this one right here? Yeah. Yeah, and actually, th these are some of these are different fires. Um, oh, okay. It so depends on the creek reach. The Gap Fire affected, like for example, SJ2. That's uh, San Jose Creek. But then, when you look at uh, the Mission Creek sites, the Arroyo Burrow sites, those were affected primarily by the T Fire and then the uh, Jesuita Fire after that. So there, it, what that shows is just before the fire, and then the first year after, and, and then the second. the second year after. So what we're seeing now is it looks like it's at least two, and it's probably going to be more like three mm -hmm. to four years before. It depends on the severity of the fire as well. You know, the, mission, the upper mission and rattlesnake sites, I mean, it was like 80, not, not 80, I think it was 75 to 80 percent of the watersheds were burned. So that was a very severe event. Obviously, if you had a lesser fire, less watershed area, um, affected, you wouldn't have as, as big of a drop, at least in theory. So you're attributing most of the decline to excess sediments, or that would be a, definitely one of the main factors. Cross I mean, check. we went could be, it, you know, it could be a wide variety of things. There's all types of water chemistry impacts. You know, you can have lower water levels because you do have uh, more fine sediments mm -hmm. and sand. You, you don't have the depth. There's a lot of diff it washes out all the woody debris. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so there's a lot of things going on there that, that cause that decline. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. I just have a question. Maybe this is for staff a little bit more, but um, I saw that the county um, funded the study in 2001. Do they contribute to funding at all now? The county was, uh, at one time, they were an equal partner in this. They, Project Clean Waters had their, kind of, their funding uh, cut back significantly, so they are still contributing a smaller amount, and we're looking at, uh, they do the field work for their sites. We look at five of their sites, okay. and then we look at uh, usually 12 to 13 sites as part of our program. Okay. So it is still beneficial. We're able to use their data and, uh, and have a more robust data set. Anyone else? More questions? No? All right, Jeff, thanks very much. You're very welcome. Informative. Anytime. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
see you next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then moving on to the uh, fiscal year 2013 budget. Cameron? Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, uh, committee members. Um, let's see, we'll get this started. Okay, tonight I will be uh, presenting to you the proposed fiscal year 2013 budget for the Creeks Division. And I wanted to start off by talking a little bit about the, the budget process. And for those of you who have been through this before, you know that the city normally does a, uh, has a two-year budget cycle. And this is actually the second year of, of that cycle. So last year you reviewed the uh, fiscal year 2012 and 2013 budget where uh, that's been to the city council. It was adopted as a financial plan for the city. But we go through this process uh, again just to review or make any changes to the budget. And what you're going to see tonight is uh, nearly identical to what you saw last year. But this is a chance for us to walk back through it and make a recommendation to the uh, city council. So um, we started out the budget process. I, I, we met with the budget subcommittee back on March 21st and went over the budget in some pretty fine detail. Uh, we're here tonight uh, for, for the committee, the full committee to review the budget. Um, the, the entire city budget was actually presented to the city council yesterday evening and then um, so we're just going to be looking just at the Creeks Division budget then we'll be at the Parks and Recreation Commission next week and then to City Council on May 14th and then ultimately the whole city budget is wrapped up by City Council uh, at some point in June I think they're looking at June 19th um, <clears throat> as you all know most of the funding for the Creeks Division comes from the voter approved measure B, which is a 2% transient occupancy tax. Uh, that, that money is placed into a special fund and it's restricted to pay for uh, stormwater and surface water quality improvements and creek restoration projects. Uh, the Creeks Division receives no funding from the city's general fund. And the, the budget we're going to be looking at tonight uh, is consistent with the the Measure B, uh, Measure B itself, and then the Measure B funding guidelines, which were developed by this committee and, and approved by City Council, and actually uh, reauthorized by this committee back in January of 2010. Um, and as I said, what we're going to look at tonight is is uh, substantially similar to what we saw last year. So, getting into the numbers, I'm going to start a little bit with uh, I'm going to start off with the revenue numbers. Um, our FY 13 revenue projections are um, from they come from the finance department are actually up two hundred and two thousand dollars from what we thought they were going to be last year so that's good news that's a six uh, and three quarter percent increase from uh, FY 12 and uh, like our current year budget what you're seeing down here on this line like our current year budget and as we discussed back in October when we went through our capital improvement program and what, like we talked about um, at our budget subcommittee meeting, we are using uh, $675,000 from the Creeks Fund Reserve to balance this year's budget. And that's paying for a portion of our capital improvement program for this year. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the reserve later, but I just wanted to point that out because here it's identified as revenue because it's coming in from an outside source into our into our operating uh, budget. Um, and I also want to note that that our budgets never include any grant funding. So although we've been very successful at obtaining grant funding, uh, we never project out or count on grant revenues coming in. So when it when we do get those revenues in, it does end up changing what our reserve balance is at the end of the year. Okay, and on the expenditure side, the, um, uh, there, are, there are a few exceptions uh, in terms of changes from our FY12 to our FY13 budget. And I think I wanted to, to just uh, go straight to those. And first, as you can see in the top line, our, our salaries and benefits number increases by $67,000. And uh, we're not proposing to add any positions. The, the main reason for that increase, uh, in fact, 
uh, about $53,000 of that is reflecting that in, in FY12, we had a unpaid furlough. So they were labor concessions from city staff uh, for unpaid time off and the, the budget proposed for FY13 does not have uh, furlough included in it. So that, like I said, that makes up 53,000 of the $67,000 increase. And um, uh, the next line I wanted to talk about was the uh, supplies and services cost. Those increased by about $75,000 from FY12 to FY13. That's primarily made up in two specific line items for the budget. One is uh, something from our stormwater management program, and that's a, a requirement that the city do a stormwater public opinion survey. And we have to do that about every five years. Um, we've estimated the cost of doing that at about $60,000. And that's, that's what we've put in the budget. I don't know what the actual cost will be, but it probably would be close to that. We also have another, another one-time cost included, and that is $20,000 for uh, remulching out at the upper Las Positas Creek restoration project. And um, that's something we have to do. We have to remulch a, a, a large area. We use that for weed control. We're also uh, trying to improve the soil health out there. And that's, when I say that's a one-time cost, we did it when we completed the project. We'll do it now, and, and by the time that, that mulch breaks down, we should have enough plant cover that we don't have the same type of weed growth. And, and so we probably won't have to do it again, or at least not on that scale. Um, and then finally, as you can see in our capital program line item, uh, we moved from FY12, we were at 1.2 million and we're moving to 1.3 million this year. And, and just those four lines are, or excuse me, those three lines are the bulk of the difference between FY12 and FY13 budget. Okay, and here is a, for those of you who are more visual, here's a, a budget breakdown by the categories. And as you can see, as, as it always is, our capital program makes up 36% uh, of our budget. It's the largest single uh, line item in our budget. And just to, to clarify what that is, our capital program is our, our long-term projects, our larger projects. The, the ongoing operations uh, is, is of the Creeks Division are come from the operational budget, and that is um, the remaining 64% here, and that's for everything from water quality monitoring to uh, trash pickup to our outreach and education program to office supplies and things like that. Um, I also like to break the budget down to to um, identify the three main pro program areas for the Creeks Division, and those are water quality, creek restoration, and community outreach, and determine how much of our budget is going to each of those categories. And one of the things that's interesting with this table, uh, several years ago the committee had, had proposed some general guidelines for staff in, in developing the budget. Those guidelines were uh, to try to allocate about 50% of the, of the Measure B funds to water quality projects and programs, about 25% to creek restoration and 25% to outreach and education. What you see here is when you look at the entire budget and you're including the capital projects, um, those numbers are, are different. But when you take out the capital projects and you look at our operational budget, it's almost right on uh, for that breakdown. And I like to take out the capital projects because they change so much from year to year that these numbers really vary pretty, uh, pretty dramatically depending on what we decide to go forward with in terms of our capital program. And so it doesn't really paint a, a, a true picture of what's going on um, on, a, on a more day-to-day -day basis or year-to-year. And then this chart breaks down the exp expenditures by program area, but further takes a, a step to show, um, for example, all of, all of the blue area is, is water quality, the green area is restoration, and the um, uh, reddish or burgundy area is, is outreach and education. And you can see, uh, especially in the creek restoration area, a huge chunk of the funds going to creek restoration are just in the capital program and we have a few large items in the capital program that are kind of skewing those percentages a little bit. So the main highlights uh, in the proposed FY13 budget is 
uh, on a real positive note, the Measure B revenues are, are projected to be up $211,000 from last year. We have a $100,000 increase in our capital program transfer. Uh, we have the $20,000 increase for the Upper Las Positas Creek project and the $60,000 increase for the Water Quality Public Opinion Survey. And then also, uh, I'd just like to remind you, we are proposing to transfer 675000 from reserves into the operating budget to cover those capital program costs. Um, we're proposing to con continue with our water quality monitoring research in FY13, and we're doing so at the same funding levels as FY12. And we expect to have several other continuing programs, and they're funded at the same levels that we had in, in uh, fiscal year 12 as well. Here is our, um, this says 12 and 13. This is our FY13 capital program. And um, this was developed at uh, our committee meeting back in October of 2011. And um, we've included this, all, all of the items in our proposed budget. Um, I'm not sure I need to go through these. I think you all are, are fairly familiar with those projects in that list. Um, and then to, to talk a little more about the reserves, the, the purpose of our unappropriated reserves uh, as defined by the committee is for capital projects, grant matches, and revenue shortfalls. And in the past, the committee has recommended tr to try to maintain a reserve balance that was equivalent to uh, two large restoration projects or two large uh, Creeks Division projects. And we've, uh, we've kind of pegged that at, uh, to mean, uh, well, we used a, a large restoration project we did at the Royal Borough Estuary, which was about a million and a half. And so we've, we always shoot to try to maintain a balance close to $3 million. Um, at this point, we're estimating the reserve balance at the end of this fiscal year to be about three and a half million. So when we do our transfer of 675,000, we'll be just under 3 million uh, at the end of FY13. And as we've seen in the past, that, that balance could go up if we're successful with, with grants. Um, of course, as we move through uh, a fiscal year, we're always looking for ways to, to save money or not spend money that we thought we were gonna have to spend. And so if we can have any savings, then we can try to keep our, our reserve our, or increase our reserve a little bit by doing that. And so we, we did go over this uh, concept of doing the reserve transfer during our subcommittee meeting, and I think it's fair to say that uh, the, committee me the subcommittee members were, uh, were okay and felt, felt comfortable proceeding as proposed. And then um, for fiscal year uh, 2013 grants, um, FY, I, I put one on here from FY12 that was, that was recently awarded from the California Department of Fish and Game. Uh, I, I kept it on here because this is a project that we're actually probably going to start construction during FY13, and this is a construction grant. And so, um, so we've continued to be very successful with, with grant awards with another, uh, another year with over a million dollars in grant revenue coming in. And as you can see, we already have uh, several million, or yeah, several million more dollars in grants pending for other projects as well. Um, and I, I, again, I, I can't overstate uh, that we're that we're continually looking for um, grant revenue possibilities so that we can leverage every every Measure B dollar that we get just to get the greatest bang for the buck for the community out of those dollars. And with that, I'll conclude and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. That was a really great presentation, really clear. My question is the um, million <coughs> seven grant that was awarded. If I, if I understand correctly, that million seven isn't reflected anywhere in the budget, either as an expenditure or as a project, as an expense, revenue or expense, I guess is what I should be saying. That's correct. That's correct, although we, we will have, you know, ultimately we will get to a point where we'll have a contract. So the, the, what happened, um, this was, this grant was just accepted and appropriated by city council uh, last week. So 
what we will have is we will have a, an expenditure account and a revenue account in, in our budget to spend, spend that money and then be reimbursed that, those funds, um, which ends up balancing itself out. We won't actually start incurring expenses until we enter into a, a construction contract and we start, start paying for that. And we won't enter into that until we've uh, got all the, gotten all the money together that we need to go forward with the project. And some of the grants you see there is, is a subset. I only put the ones on that we've actually applied for, but we have others in the work to help fill our funding gap on that project. So the million seven will never go into the reserve? C correct. Correct. Um, we we have, uh, I should say, we have had that type of situation happen where we were um, on the Upper Las Positas Creek project, for example. The committee had recommended fully funding that with Measure B dollars, and, and City Council had actually approved that. We entered into a contract, and then subsequent to that, we received a grant for 1.7 million that ended up, well, it, it ended up never having to come out of reserve because we were able to use the grant funds. Mr. Chair, um, can you tell me or do you know, uh, Cameron, how they, they calculate the coming fiscal year's TOT or Measure B funds coming on off the TOT? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I, I don't know specifically the answer except they're looking at, they, they look at industry trends and um, they look at their our own local history and experience and and base their um, forecasts on that and in in my experience i mean i 've been here five years now and i 've seen um, i 've seen one instance where we came in uh, slightly below i think what the forecast was, and every other year we 've uh, the, the actuals have been higher than the forecast mm -hmm. so i think they're um, whatever formula they're using seems to be a, a pretty, uh, conservative pretty conservative and, and close formula. So do you, can you tell us what the highest uh, TOT bunnies the Creeks Division has ever received? This is 2.8 is what they're um, projecting this year. I, I'm guessing it's I been do higher. Have it. I don't know how far back I have it, but it's... Oh, it's, it's okay. Not, if you can, no, if okay. you want to... Get it to us later. That's okay. Fine. No. So the the uh, forecast for 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 the current fiscal year or for FY13. I just want to know how high it's been ever in the past. Uh, what five six years? Um, it's okay. Well, that can be answered later. <laughs> no. No. The. Uh, well, the forecasted amount for FY13 is the highest. I'm going back here just to 10, though. So this and is I, I don't be a record higher. It would be 13? the it would be That's the highest. I think at. we've I think we've I think the high the previous high was I think 2007 or 8. Paul, do you know? I might have it here, but I don't want to. Well, I know they were those were good years in the hotel I think, industry. I think 2008 might have been the highest year, but I think um, and then we, and then we dropped down some, but I think we we might uh, go higher than 2008 this year, and and then Great. we go higher next year. So I think wow. it's higher than it's ever been. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, can I ask a couple more questions? The table with all of the line items, uh, the first table of the major um, categories of the budget. You got a special projects line for twelve thousand. Can you Kay. tell us what that is? Sure. Okay. The um, these these categories are are categories that are that are generally set up by the finance department and applied across the city, and then within divisions there are different line items that would fit into a certain type of category. So, what we have in the special projects um, category, we've got about uh, six line items in there. One item is called community promotions, and that's when we do. Um, uh, water quality related events out in the out in the community so things like earth day or we ha we have a table down at the uh harbor and seafood festival or we're um 
or we're doing a, a creek cleanup event and we're doing some advertising or something. So we've got $5,000 in that line item. Um, oh, excuse, um, yeah. And then we have uh, $200 in there for uh, something that finance is doing that's a, a GASB actuarial study. Hmm. We have a creek sign program, so if you see all around the all around the city, there there are signs on the bridges that indicate what creek you're passing over. It'll say Mission Creek or Sycamore Creek or something. We've got twenty five hundred dollars in there, and that's just for us to continually go out as as they are damaged or faded or something, and mm -hmm. to replace those signs. And then lastly, we have um, excuse me, the the creek sign program is five thousand, and we have twenty five hundred dollars in there um, that we that's available for a UCSB Bren School group project. And so uh, Bren School has a master's program in environmental science and management, and, and they do group programs and projects each year. And we have a little money. We haven't done one for a couple of years, but in the past we have uh, used those funds to provide supplies or equipment for a group that's doing a project that's going to provide some some benefit for Great. our program. Oh, that's neat. Uh, two more questions. Real quick. I'm not <laughs> trying to keep us here all night, uh, but I'm truly interested in this stuff, so mm -hmm. that's why I'm asking. Uh, you got a transfer out line of about 200000 for the year. I'm guessing that's for computers and vehicles and that the inner city funds? No, uh, no uh, not necessarily. Let me, let me take a look. One of our, one of our largest transfers out uh, is for the street sweeping program. And so we transfer funds to the public works department who manages that, who manages that program. And so um, our street sweeping transfer out uh, for the current fiscal year is about $186,000. And the, the proposed transfer out for FY13 is $191,558. Um, and then a couple, a couple other transfers we have. One is, uh, oh, one other transfer actually that we have is um, for the uh, the Creeks Division's share of the city's financial management system replacement project, and that's about fifteen and a half thousand for that. So that the c the cost of that entire program is is spread across the city and borne by all departments, all, all, all divisions, all departments and divisions. Yeah. Okay, and one last question. You're transferring 675 from reserves for 13. Um, is this typical? Is this on the high end? It's about 20% of the total reserve yeah. that's there right now. Um, in FY12, we transferred, I think, $634,000. In FY11, we transferred 1.6 million. Um, that was that was by far the largest amount, and so um, part of what we're part of what we'll do, and we'll continue to do that with the we'll continue to do that with the committee when we sit down and we're looking at our capital program and we're looking out and we're looking at our at our reserve balance and kind of what's on the horizon, and we just try to we're trying to maintain our balance our reserve balance at at the the amount that the committee had set and. Um, but also looking at what the grant revenues are coming in, uh, and and what the needs are in terms of what the needs and the opportunities are in terms of the capital program. Okay, thanks, Cameron. Sure. Have we in the past transferred out for sweet street sweeping? Yes, as far as I know, uh, the. There has been a transfer for the street sweeping program for as long as as the um, Creeks Division has existed. Uh, it's it's not been without controversy uh, over the years, and um, uh, the the dollar amount has um, the dollar amount generally has increased over the years. I'll see how I've only got a few years right in front of me right now, but. Um, uh, from 2011, we were at 180. 2012, 186. 2013, 192. So we're looking at about a $6,000 uh, a year increase.
All right, then. Well, if there's no further questions, um, I'd like to see if we can get a uh, motion to approve the proposed fiscal year 2013 budget to the Parks and Rec Commission and the City Council. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Then, uh, yes, Lee. Uh, Mr. Chair, did the committee already recognize what a special day this is for people having birthdays and preparing to have special dinners whose support of the committee is absolutely essential and is too often overlooked by the public? No, we haven't, but please fill us in. <laughs> Many people don't realize that, uh, that Chen Hollywood provides the administrative and clerical and office support that makes uh, Cameron Benson and the entire Creeks team so effective. And um, uh, Cameron had kind of promised her that this meeting was going to end expeditiously so she could go to a delightful birthday dinner. So I thought it was important to recognize nice people when they have important birthdays. So happy birthday, Jen. Thank you, Lee. That was really nice. So with that, uh, may I get a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting? And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye.